Are you thinking about moving to the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis, St. Paul in Minnesota? Want to know the pros and cons of the area? Well, this video is for you. Hey guys, Roddy here, local Minnesota and Wisconsin realtor since 2010, serving the Twin Cities area of Minneapolis, St. Paul and the suburbs around them. Today's video, I'm going to cut through the fluff and get right down to the facts to help you decide if you want to move to Minnesota and which of the cities you should move to. But before I get into it, make sure to subscribe to this channel and check out some of my other videos as I give you no nonsense content straight to the facts about the entire Twin Cities area and Western Wisconsin. Let's get into it. The Twin Cities metro area is home to over 3 million people in seven counties with over 182 communities. If you're considering a move here, this can seem extremely overwhelming to analyze alone. Where do you go? Who do you listen to? After all, it might not just be you that's moving here. If you care about where your spouse and your kids will be spending their time during this next season of your lives, watch the entire video. I'll be doing simple pros and cons list analysis, and you don't want to miss the end of the cons list. Let's start with the pros. I don't think that you'll find too many of these pros surprising as these are benefits of most metropolitan areas in the United States. But instead of just listing these as benefits, let's ask the question, why would you want to live here? Number one, ample entertainment. The Twin Cities area has way too many options to list for entertainment. If you're a sports fan, you'll quickly notice the loyalty Minnesotans have to their sports teams. The Minnesota Wild hockey team plays out of St. Paul at the XL Energy Center. The Minnesota Twins baseball team plays out of Target Field in Minneapolis, which is very close to where the Minnesota Vikings play at U.S. Bank Stadium. Minnesota is also home to the Minnesota United Soccer Club, the Lynx WNBA team, and more. Minnesota sports are just as popular at the collegiate and high school levels whose games and tournaments draw tens of thousands. Outside of sports, Minnesota is a hub for musical entertainment, mostly in the actual cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Every year, you'll find fantastic lineups of pop culture stars, classical engagements, and music festivals. Minnesota has long been known for its amazing comedy scene through venues like Acme, Rick Bronson's House of Comedy, and many more. Basically, you'll never run out of top-notch entertainment in the Twin Cities. Number two, dining. Whether you're a casual diner that enjoys a romantic date night or someone that can't figure out how to cook a noodle, the Twin Cities got you covered. Both St. Paul and Minneapolis offer more selections than you could probably visit in a year, but the trend continues deep out into the suburbs. Some fan favorites in the Twin Cities are Fogo de Chao and Martina in Minneapolis, W.A. Frost and Meritage in St. Paul, plus countless options through the entire area. Since 2020, most restaurants now have the option for you to dine on their fine cuisine from your own couch, with services like Uber Eats and Grubhub. And I can't think of any immediate suburb in the Twin Cities area that doesn't have a highly functional food delivery service. Number three, exemplary hospitals. Look, nobody wants an accident or illness to hit any member of your family, but in the chance that it does happen, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than the Twin Cities. St. Paul and Minneapolis are home to world-class facilities like Children's Hospital, the Fairview Hospital System, Regions, United, and Abbott Northwestern. The University of Minnesota even has its own medical center. But outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul, just a short 75-mile drive south through the farmland is the world-famous Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Number four, high-performing schools. In just about every major city in the United States, there are high-performing schools in the private sector, so I'm not going to talk about those specifically. Instead, I'm going to talk about the public school system. If you're moving here and you have kids, you'll really want to pay attention to this part. And don't worry, I'll have links in the description. This is a map of the Twin Cities area with a top 20 school districts noted. Niche.com does a fantastic job analyzing and rating these districts. And the common theme with the highest performing school districts is that they're located in more affluent areas with low crime. I've also put a home search link in the description with these top 20 school districts. So if you're already home browsing, just use that link. These top school systems will elevate and prepare your children for what follows better than most areas in the country. And if you want to keep your kids local after high school, the Twin Cities has some amazing post-secondary options all within a 30 minute drive. Number five, diversity. The Twin Cities and Minneapolis in particular are wonderfully diverse areas. Be prepared to take in different cultures as you shop, dine, and visit these areas. Each neighborhood in Minneapolis and St. Paul seems to have its own cultural identity as different waves of immigrant groups moved here for opportunities over the last couple hundred years. Okay, so we covered the pros of living in the Twin Cities and now we get to the part that most people aren't too keen on discovering. Only one of these five on the what you won't like about the Twin 
Twin Cities list could even remotely be considered a subjective opinion of myself. Rather, these are facts in area that are in principle a negative on your quality of life scale. The good news about everything on the con list is that every single one of these cons depend on what area you live in. If you don't want to deal with something on the con list, just avoid the areas that are affected negatively. Number one, heavy restrictions. If you're moving to the Twin Cities from another large city, you probably won't even notice a difference. However, for someone like myself that lives in a town with very little restrictions, I wouldn't be a good fit for many of the areas in the Twin Cities. Now, when I say restrictions, what does that mean? Well, for one thing, HOAs dominate the suburbs around Minneapolis and St. Paul. And the HOAs are typically built so that the quality of life of the surrounding homes are negatively affected by one neighbor's lifestyle. But even further than HOAs, most suburbs around the Twin Cities have lengthy ordinances and restrictions. For example, certain dog breeds are prohibited in different cities where you park your car on the street is heavily enforced, egg-laying chickens are regulated, even architecture can be regulated. But don't let that hamper your decision to move here, because most areas outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul are more willing to let you do what you want within reason. Number two, traffic. I'm a Midwesterner, okay? I wanna measure my drive time on the highway at one minute per one mile. So it may be a little over exaggerated when I state that the highways get really busy, but in reality, rush hour is no joke around the Twin Cities. Every main vein of highway to and from Minneapolis or St. Paul is bound to get backed up during busy times, especially during the winter when the chances of someone getting into a car accident are higher. What I think you should do when considering an area to live is use Google Maps to give you directions and set the arrival time during rush hour. And that should give you a good picture of how long your commute is going to be on average. Number three, noise. Again, if you're moving here from another large metropolitan area, the noise here may actually be a break for you. But for someone that comes from a suburban or rural area, it can drive you nuts. Highways are always open, even in the middle of the night. In an area that's generally flat, like Minnesota, that sound carries on for quite a distance. High density urban areas have a lot of people that work and play at different times of day or night. Sirens go off at all hours for good reason, but it can interrupt your sleep. The further away you get from the metro center and the highways, the quieter it will be. Number four, expensive homes. Okay, this little tidbit's gonna save you a lot of time in researching areas. I'm very proud of it, and I don't know any other realtor that has used this technique. Go to Google Maps sometime and search up the location locations of the grocery chain Kowalski's. Now, it isn't perfect, but for the most part, Kowalski's only opens up in affluent locations. And what do most of these affluent locations have in common? Low crime, high performing schools, and expensive homes. I've been saying for a few years now that I think the Twin Cities will be like a new Denver when it comes to home prices. And what I mean by that is even though prices have become very high in these desirable areas, I think they are far from peaking. As long as interest rates go back to lower levels, we've got more buyers than homes. And that'll continue to drive up prices. Even in undesirable neighborhoods, prices have more than doubled nearly tripled since the bottom of the market in 2012. My advice, buy a home that you can afford in an affluent area with great schools, and you'll be sitting in a great spot within a couple of years. And number five, crime. Crime is the worst when you are actually in Minneapolis or St. Paul. Now, the suburbs are a lot safer, and that's where most people end up moving anyways. But Minneapolis, man, Minneapolis is one of the most dangerous cities to live in in the entire United States of America. According to Neighborhood Scout, it has a crime index of two out of 100, with 100 being the safest. It has over two and a half times the national average for violent crimes. Statistically, your chance of being a victim of a violent crime in Minneapolis is one in 84 and the chance of being a victim of a property crime is one in 21. And carjackings are a recent trend that has skyrocketed in Minneapolis. But as I stated before, this is an isolated issue. It's actually isolated to just mainly a few neighborhoods in Minneapolis and a couple in St. Paul and very few suburbs. If you want access to the crime information, I've linked it in the description below. I hope this information has been helpful for you. Now, listen, I've been selling homes in the Twin Cities for my entire adult life. I know what areas are best if you let me know know what's important to you. If you're considering moving to the area, your first step should be emailing me to let me know your timeline and your needs. Your second step should be to subscribe to this channel as I'll be filling you in on everything you need to know about moving here. If you're relocating from another state, I've even built a website for you to help you find the best experienced agent with world-class service. And the awesome part about that, it's free. Go to findrealagent.com or click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. All right, great job, Roddy. Yeah.